Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's session, I'm going to talk about a, a work by Thomas Lodge. It is a looking glass for London. About this book, I'm going to talk. Before that, subscribe my YouTube channel to get the further updates about the upcoming lectures. Yes, this work, uh, a looking glass for London. It, it was an you know, uh, Elizabethan era of stage play and he collaborated with Robert Greene for this work. And uh, this work, you know, which uh, recounts the uh, biblical story of uh, Jonah and the fall of Nineveh. Jonah, J-O-N-A-H, uh, Nineveh, N-I-N-E-V-H, okay? It's a, a very uh, worthy example for survival of medieval uh, morality play style of uh, drama in the period of uh, English Renaissance theater. The premier production of the play uh, Looking Glass uh, was uh, staged by the Queen Elizabeth's men. Okay, uh, it's a you know company. Okay, that company acted uh, uh, many uh, Green's play, and of course uh, a clone of the play was portrayed by Queen's uh, man of John Adams. This play also was acted by Lord Strange men uh, in the year. Uh, 1592. It was remained in the dramatic uh, repertoire for uh, many years and it was also acted at uh, uh, Nordlingen, N-O-R-D-L-I-N-G-E-N, Nordlingen uh, in German in the year of 1605. Yeah, Looking Glass was, you know, uh, entered into stationer register in the year 1594 with the help of Thomas Creed uh, who printed the work later. The second quote of the work was issued by Creed, Thomas Creed uh, in the year of 1598. Okay, This one also sold by Barley. Okay? Mm. And a third was followed in the year 1602 and of course printed by Thomas Creed, sold by Thomas Pavier, P-A-V-I-E-R, Pavier. And again, the fourth quote appeared in the year 1617. The, the opening scene uh, which showed uh, a King Rasni, R A S N I, King Rasni of Nineveh, N I N E V H, okay, a King Rasni of Nineveh, uh, who just, you know, uh, after his victory over uh, Jeroboam, J E R O B O A M, okay, after, you know, his victory over Jeroboam, who is the king of uh, Jerusalem, okay, monstrously vain and arrogant, uh, Rasni relishes the uh, sycophantic praise of his courtiers and uh, tributary kings. There uh, he proclaims that uh, Rasni is a god on earth and uh, the only dissenting voice comes from the king of Crete, C-R-E-T-E, Crete, who protests against Rasni's planned uh, uh, incestuous marriage with his sister's uh, Remilia. But the protest is fruitless. Rasni deprives the uh, Christian king of his crown uh, and bestowing it upon the uh, upstart flatterer uh, Radagon. R-A-D-A-G-O-N. Radagon. The prophet uh, Osias, O-S-E-E-A-S. Osias was lowered over the stage by an angel uh, seated on a throne. Osias functions uh, as observer and chorus, commenting upon the play's action and applying its uh, lessons to contemporary uh, English life. Uh, in the main plot, okay, uh, alternate between the court of Rasni and uh, Rimelia, scenes showing an uh, shred and his victims, primarily the spendthrift the young gentleman uh, Thrasybulus, T-H-R-A-S-Y-B-U-L-U-S, Thrasybulus, and the virtuous uh, to poor Alcum. Uh, both of whom, you know, have uh, loans uh, forfeited to an uh, unscrupulous money lender. The two men try to obtain justice from the uh, law courts, but find that the law is corrupt. Rasni and Remelia prepare a wedding before the court, uh, which is prevented when a, a thunderstorm rises and uh, Remelia is killed by a bolt of lightning. Rasni rejects the implication of divine wrath in place of his sister. He takes uh, Alvida, A L V I D A, Alvida, the wife of the king of uh, Paphlagonia, P A P H L A G O N I, Paphlagonia, uh, as his lover. Alvida poisons her husband, uh, a deed that uh, Rasni praises. Uh, Jonah enters in the third act as the play portrays his flight to Tarsus and Joppa to avoid the 
divinely ordered mission to warn uh, Nineveh of uh, its uh, sinful ways. Jonah's actual uh, swallowing by uh, whale is not depicted directly, but uh, the fourth act opens with him uh, being uh, cast out of a whale's belly upon the stage. Jonah then accepts his divine mission and uh, heads towards Nineveh. So having failed to obtain justice in the courts, Alcon appeals to his son Radagon, the fast rising courtier. But Radagon is you know, uh, dismissive of his poor family. He has ascended to wealth and power. Alcon's wife curses Radagon and immediately he is uh, consumed by a flame of fire. Rasni's uh, Maggie defined this as a purely natural uh, phenomenon, once again ignoring the importance of divine uh, retribution. They pass off a sign in the heaven the same way. Alveda attempts to uh, seduce the king of Cilicia, C-I-L-I-C-I-A, -I -I, Cilicia, uh, another Rasni's uh, clients. She faints when uh, Rasni catches her. In the, in the fifth act, Alcum and his family are reduced to survive. Jonah arrives at Nineveh preaching uh, repentance. Uh, his uh, preaching is, you know, uh, so powerful, even most corrupt or affected. Sinners uh, who fast and uh, repent, even Rasni and Alvidia are forgiven. Jonah ends the play alone uh, on the stage, applying the moral lessons of the play to the lives of Londoners and Englishmen. Well, that's it about uh, the work. Thanks for uh, listening. The next session. We'll talk about some other work by Thomas Lodge. Kindly subscribe my channel.